श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात परम ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम तस्म श्री गुरव नम द वर्ल्ड दैट वी एक्सपीरियंस द एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ द वर्ल्ड एंड द एक्सपीरियंस सर ऑफ द वर्ल्ड थ्री कॉम्पोनेंट्स out of these three components what is that which we give maximum importance to most of the time we give importance to the world that we experience and as a result most of our time energy efforts are directed towards improving the world or indulging in the world or commenting on the world as a result we are at the periphery of our personality the second type of people are those who give importance to the experience of the world so all the time talking about their past i was there i was here i had done this thing i had done that thing particularly oldies like me they don't live in the present all the time talking only about the past not knowing nobody is interested in our past everybody is concerned about their future but old people have no future they have got only past and as a result the whole life is spent only on this when i was here when i was there when i did that when i did that they also keep on moving around something which doesn't exist and then the third type of people they are no concern about who is this experiencer see like when i say i am uh, unhappy who is this i see when i say i am old who is this i so when i say i am old here i means the body when i say i am hungry i means the pranamaya kosha when i say i am miserable i means the manomaya kosha when i say i am a successful person i mean vidyanamaya kosha when i say i am happy go lucky i am anandamaya kosha when i say i am mother father brother sister husband wife in laws out laws inside how many of eyes are there wherever there is a crowd there is a noise and that is why we keep on talking to ourselves not identifying what is this i see are there many eyes and how these eyes are born see friends in sanskrit the world is called as prapancha prapancha pancham is five pra means extreme see so extreme five what is the extreme five five great elements yesterday evening we have seen the space the air fire waters and the earth five great elements they have got respectively five tanmatras essential qualities shabda sparsha roopa rasa gandha another five now these five objects are contacted through five sense organs third five then we interact with the world with five organs of action the fourth five and for doing this we require energy the prana they are also five see therefore prapancha an expansion of fives and that is why we have got five fingers see 
Now these fingers are the best thing that you can enter on the spiritual path if we know how to use this. You must have seen, all of you are yoga students, you know very well. You are given this mudra. There are many mudras, this mudra is given. Now what is this mudra? This is a complete knowledge of spirituality. Only this one mudra. It is not a snuff mudra. Take the snuff. It is not a snuff mudra. Be attentive. This small little finger indicates our Annamaya Kosha gross body. Then this ring finger indicates Pranamaya Kosha. Then the middle finger indicates Manomaya Kosha. Whose body, whose prana, whose mind? Of course, mine. With Jnana Maya Kosha is the I factor. Like you have got the max factor, this I is the max factor. Now, when this I gets identified with the Mano Maya Kosha, so what is the mind? Mind is a seat where experiences happen. Joy, sorrows, good or bad. So, when this I factor gets identified with the joy experience, I am happy. When this I gets identified with the miserable experience, I am miserable. Then, this I gets identified with the modification of the prana. So, the modifications are prana are only two, hunger and thirst. So, when the I gets identified with the hunger, I am hungry, I am thirsty. Then, this I gets identified with the body, the gross body. Then, I am man, I am woman, I am young, I am old, I am healthy, I am unhealthy, I am fat, I am thin, I am black, I am white. So, when this I gets identified with any of these three, Somebody is born. And this body is miserable. See friends, in the deep sleep, there is no identification with these three. See, Upanishad says, Tatra Mata Amata Bhavati, Tatra Pita Apita Bhavati. In deep sleep, we are neither man, woman, young, old, husband, wife, brother, sister, Indian, American, none of them. And because we are nobody, we are happy. So what is the spiritual practice now? Be attentive. Spiritual practice is this mudra. This mudra tells, this I must disidentify itself from the body, the prana and the mind. When this I is separated from these three, where will it go? It goes back to the source, Ananda. And this is what is all the spiritual practice. Remain identified with the body and try to be happy is something like trying to write on a flowing waters the Om Tat Savitur Varendyam, you can never write. See friends, therefore, when we really mean business, we must be convinced of it. What we lack in our life on the spiritual path is conviction and commitment. If we are convinced, we will naturally do it without any effort. It is something like this. We are all convinced money is essential. Therefore, nobody has any complaints that earning money is difficult, therefore I am not going to earn money. Because we are convinced that money is essential. Then we find out our own techniques, above the table, below the table, around the table, behind the table. Because we are convinced about that money, money, money. Exactly the same way. When we will be convinced that real spiritual practice begins when the first goal of meditation 
or spiritual practice is freedom from body identification. If this is happening by whatever you do, you are on the spiritual path. If this is not happening, whatever you may do, it is only a material life. It is not spiritual path. See, friends, Therefore, when we practice asana, according to Yoga Shastra, so what is asana? Asana is remaining happy. Sthira Sukham. Not struggling. See? Sthira Sukham. And how do we attain it? Prayatna Shaitilya. No struggle. Relax. And when can we relax? Ananta Samapati Bhyam. When we merge in the infinite. See friends. And therefore, how can we do this through asana? This is the technique required to be known. If you look at this camera tripod, this tripod is in a perfect asana. What is the greatness of this tripod? This tripod will not uh, tilt anywhere, it will not fall and it can remain in this posture for years together. Now what is the secret? The secret is the center of gravity of this post um, falls exactly in the center, therefore the balance is normal and therefore there is no possibility of falling. Exactly the same way. When we sit for meditation, what is necessary is, are we able to achieve that posture? So the gap, the distance between the knees, the distance between the knee and the backbone, the distance between the knee and the neck is approximately equal. It becomes a cone, like a pyramid, it becomes a cone. And the center of that pyramid or the cone falls exactly in the center of gravity. And the center of gravity is a point between the two pin bones or the ischia points of the pelvic. And when you are able to keep it, you can sit there without any effort. And when your body is thus no more an issue for you, then you can get out of body identification. And when the body identification is dropped, then we can think of something higher. If you are all the time only thinking about body, 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 we can never proceed further. Friends, in nature, if you observe, yesterday probably I told you, the plants eat from below, grow upwards. Animals eat from the front, grow backwards. Human beings eat from above, grow downwards. So as regard the body is concerned, in nature we have achieved perfection at the body level. There is nothing more that can be achieved. After having achieved perfection at the body level, now what is the next step? Next step can be only spiritual evolution. There cannot be further evolution other than spiritual evolution. And therefore, when a person has thus understood that how long are we going to keep this body, body, body? There was a great uh, saint, yogi, near Shirdi, there is a place where he lived. He was born and lived before Christ 700 years and continued after Christ 700 years. He lived for 1400 years, not a day or two. And he came to know about a great young saint who was hardly 15-14 years of age. And then he came to know the greatness of this great saint, Santa Ganeshwar. So he wanted to write. 
he was having all the siddhis of the world. And when he wanted to write, he was confused what to write. So he sent him a blank paper as a letter. On that, he was given the instruction, Tattva Masir, you are divine. And when he was told that way, he was totally shattered. All this I have been doing in my life, for what? And when he comes to this great master, then a small child, a small sister of this great master, he was that time hardly 10 years of age. So this great master tells this 1400 years old or young man, I cannot be your guru, go to my sister who is 10 years of age. She initiates him into the path of understanding, knowledge and realization. And those days, nothing special uh, houses or things available, only thatch roofs, thatch walls. So that young girl, when she was taking bath in her simple kind of a bathroom, without clothes, and this old man enters, and when he sees that young small girl, 10 years of age, taking bath without clothes, he feels shy, he closes his eyes and says, Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, goes back. That time that small girl laughs at her disciple. She is 10 years and he is 1400 years. Then he asks, uh, Why are you laughing? He said, I am laughing because when you see a cow without clothes, do you feel shy? When you see a goat without clothes, do you feel shy? When you see a bird without clothes, do you feel shy? Why are you feeling shy when you are looking at my body? Because your body identification is still hanging on you till such time. Body identification is valid. We are far away from the truth. See, friends, therefore, the real spiritual practice is freedom from body identification, the first step. Be attentive. It is for this purpose. Everything is told in our scriptures. The first principle is the karma. This karma is the most terrible thing. See? Sarvam karma khilam partha jnane parisamapyate. We get so much enchanted by this karma, karma, karma. Now what is the purpose of telling this karma? See friends, when something is told, when stories are told, the stories are told to communicate some principle, the moral of the story should be understood. See, like I will tell you one story and what is the moral of the story. One day I was talking to a group of seekers and uh, I had to explain how the infinite cannot be even thought of by the finite. That was the theme. So to tell, I told this story. That there was a fish from the sea. He went to a well. And in that well there was a frog. So when the frog saw this new entrant in the well, he asked, Hey, who are you? So the fish said, I am a fish. Where from you are? I am from ocean. What is this ocean? Frog has never gone out of the well. Ocean is a accumulation of waters. How much waters? So the frog showed his small little hand. This much water? Now the fish doesn't have a head. So he wagged his tail. No. Then the frog got frustrated. This much water? The fish said no. Then he got more frustrated. He took a leap from here to there. This much water? No, please. Then he took a leap from wall to wall diagonally. This much water? He said no, dear. Then how much? He said come with me. They went to the ocean. And then the fish asked, how much is this water? The frog was quiet. Now what is the moral of the story? With the finite faculties, infinite cannot be comprehended. 
and we are caught up in this finite existence. This is the moral. Now when my storytelling was over, one elderly person, he said, Swamiji, I have got one question. Say, yes, what question? The question is, how did the fish go to the well? Now what can I tell him? So I told him, the fish went to the well by Kingfisher Airlines. See, friend. What is the moral of the story? See, friend, exactly the same way. Be attentive. We are all expert in blaming others for our miseries in life. We are all expert in that. If I am husband, miserable because of my wife. If I am wife, miserable because of the husband. If I am a father, miserable because of the kids. If I am a child, miserable because of my Hitler dad. So, what is our approach to life? Try to improve others. So the husband wants to improve the wife. Where Bhagwan Ram failed, do you think Jagjeevan Ram will succeed? And thus for us spirituality means improving the society, improving the world. Bhagavad Gita clearly tells Uddhare Atmanam Natmanam Avasadayet Atmaiva Atmano Bandhu Atmaiva Ripuratmana See friends, therefore the law of karma, prarabdha, agami and sanchita karma, what is the moral of the story? See friends, the moral of the story is we normally blame others for our miseries. So the first step on the spiritual path, stop blaming others for the miseries of your life. Then you can focus attention on yourself. See? Then, one example, one day one man came, a man means a husband, he came and he was talking to me, Swamiji, I know you don't like complaints, I know you don't like questions, but where will I go? Please help me. I said, if you are asking money, I am sorry. I don't give money, I accept only. So he said, no money. The question is, I am so miserable because of my wife. She tortures me. What should I do? And started Ganga, Yamuna, Saraswati. Then I told him, do you want arguments or want to get out of this problem? Many students, when they ask questions, they engage in arguments and logic. I said, I am not available for discussion and argument. Whatever I have to say, I say and close the topic. He said, no, I want to get out of the problem. I said, okay, listen now. You have tortured that lady in your last life. And because of that torturing, you have committed sins. And therefore, God, out of all compassion and love for her and punishment for you, she has again become your wife in this life. So, your own bad karma has come in the form of the miseries in this life. But I don't remember. That doesn't make any difference. But now what can I do? Yes, this is a good question. Now, with her, start behaving properly. Then, next life, she may not be your wife. Really? Yes, now I will behave properly. See? You know, in India, the husband suffer because the ladies, the wives, they do one puja called as Karva Chauth. And as a result, they see that this fellow is booked for seven lives. So look here, she is not going to leave you unless you behave properly with her. Now see the net result. The blaming game is over. Second thing, his behavior has improved. Net result, he is at peace with himself. This is first moral of the story. Second, when we are told we did something wrong in our last life and we do something good or bad in this life, as a result of this, we have to suffer in the next life. What is the moral of the story? 
we existed before this body was born we exist in this body when this body is dropped we continue to exist therefore where do we die when are we born this is the moral of the story but all the time talking about the same thing you know uh, i am so many years old old people have got this funny thing you know in calcutta it happened i was sitting near one lake and one old man i don't know what was his age agarwatti brand a shorty with a short short and with a cap in the morning he came and stood in front of me i don't know who is that person and he asked me uh, can you tell me what is my age early morning to a unknown person when this question is asked that person is off his head so when i looked at him i said you must be 3 years of age no 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 tell me really what is my age then i told him you are 81 years young and he started bumping out of his skin friends how long are we going to carry this burden of the body how long suppose you live for another 100 years for what converting the good food into garbage see friends if you want to curse somebody curse may you live long and suffer silently long life cannot be the goal of life fulfillment in life is essential can you imagine vivekananda with a stick in the hand bent in seven places and somehow coughing and talking can you imagine you cannot the moment we say vivekananda a man of healthy strong body can you remember uh, mahatma gandhi with a strong healthy body no seven question marks what will you do with the long body therefore the first step on the spiritual path is get freedom from body identification patanjali very clearly tells jati ayu and bhogaha these three are predetermined for every body what will be the body that we will be having what will be the longevity of the body and what are the type of experiences we are going to go through it is predetermined god cannot change it so if it is already determined why waste time and when we take this step that the spiritual practice begins when body this identification happens thereafter a question can come in your mind one young boy asked me this question in a college after my lecture was over he said hamidi tell me who am i so i looked at him and i told him should i tell you the truth or bluff he said for a change tell the truth i said okay listen you are full of the highest order so he got very angry he said do you mean ramana maharshi is a fool because this is his question who am i i said no he didn't ask me this question you have asked me this question friends when i am identified with the body this question is redundant i know i am man woman young old where is the question this question can come only when we accept theoretically that i am not body then who am i this is the crux of spiritual life if you study bhagavad gita the first chapter tells only this question we all suffer from one disease and the name of the disease is i c i c i i c identity crisis i c i am confused that is what i am and this confused i he sits for meditation so as a husband you sit for meditation 
the wife will come with a spoon in the hand as your Ishta Devata. See? Sit as a father for meditation. Your son will come with a motorcycle, give money for petrol. Friends, till such time you remain as somebody, thought formation cannot be stopped. And then complain. When you are asking for meditation, there are thoughts. Let there be thoughts. Why we are afraid of thoughts? See, friends, can we go to the eye doctor and say, Sir, when I open my eyes, I can see everything. Is it a problem? I go to the ENT doctor and tell, Sir, I can hear properly. Is it a problem? In the same manner, I can think. It is not a problem. If we cannot think, then there is a problem. If we think wrongly, then there is a problem. See, friends, don't be afraid of thoughts. See, it is something like, you know, uh, I am afraid of the traffic. Therefore, although I have bought the car, beautiful car, I just keep it in the garage and do the puja. Om Jai Jagadish Hare, because I am afraid of the traffic. Don't be afraid of thoughts. Transcend the thoughts. And that we can do only if we know the genesis of thoughts. See, thoughts are a product of number one, a sense of being finite. Number two, a sense of being something other than me. And these two things are the basic reason for thought formation. And the finite we become because we are identified with one body. See friends, it is for this purpose, asana is practiced so that we keep the body like a parking lot in a parking place and get out of it. Like when we go for shopping. We keep the car in a parking lot in a secured manner, lest somebody may tow it away. So we park it and go and do our job and come back. Exactly the same way. This body, you park it on the seat and get out of it. And then you have a business. Thereafter what? Now start. Who is miserable? See, friends, till such time we are identified with the body, thoughts will be always in relation to the body. There cannot be freedom from the thought formation in relation to body if we remain identified. It is something like this. This phone is in my hand. And like we go to the airports, we have to fill in some funny forms. And if we keep somewhere, we may forget. So we hold the phone and then take the pen in between the fingers somehow and start writing. Our handwriting is influenced by our hold on the object in our hand, is it not? Exactly the same way. Till such time, our mind is identified with the shape and the form of the body. The thinking will be always in relation to the body alone. Therefore, me, my wife, my children, my country, my religion, in the deep sleep, when we are no more identified with our body, that time, there is neither my country, my religion, my guru, my children, my friends, my enemy, nothing is there, because the mind is no more identified with the body. See, friends, we have to be fully convinced of this. Then only we can step then take the next step. See, now next step. When I am identified with the body, then alone this gross world becomes real. When I am not identified with this body, this gross world doesn't exist. See, friends, like last night you all slept. Very deep sleep, I imagine. Now that in deep sleep experience, where were you? In Lonavala or Khandala? 
what were you man or woman when were you 2015 or 2016 everything disappears because we are not identified with the body see friends the world creation is not outside yesterday we have seen beautiful dance pancha mahabhutas and we remain extrovert the real creation is different than what we understand see upanishad very clearly tells that after the body is created then the parmatma enters this body this is the story to understand the principle parmatma enters the body after he enters from the brahma randra then there is a dichotomization of the purush and prakriti be attentive like the fire has two aspects light and heat the heat or the light cannot exist independent of the fire but the fire can exist without manifestation of the heat and the fire and the light so parmatma with his infinite potentiality called as prakriti is undivided and when this parmatma enters the body he starts becoming manifested be attentive something is that which is manifesting and something is the manifestation take an example it's a very simple thing it's not difficult suppose you are in a dark room you can't see anything and then you are ask a question when i switch on the light please tell what you have observed so we switch on the light what will be your reply oh there there are many people in this hall there is a good furniture so we go straight away outside then you ask a question in this hall don't you see the light of course light is there but where was our attention on the furniture okay but this light is not the light the manifestation of electricity yes but where is our attention neither on the light nor on the electricity but on the furniture which is illumined in the light exactly the same way when body identification takes place attention comes to the body and then the sense organs and the world that is comprehended through the sense organs and as a result the electricity the divinity that we are is forgotten see friends therefore this body identification is the culprit this we have to give up after it is for this purpose pranayama is done i told you about the uh, asana so do the asana so that you are out of the body identification just park it and forget about it then the second pranayama pranayama is practiced basically for loosening the tight grip between the body and the mind the body and the mind are held together strongly only because of pranamaya kosha and the separation of the body and the mind can happen under three conditions condition number 1 ignorance called as deep sleep condition number 2 compulsion called as death condition number 3 freedom we function through the body without getting identified with the body the third thing is called as the spiritual life the great masters they don't discard their body they very much live in the same body but now no more living as the body but functioning through the body it is for this purpose the pranayama is basically aimed at it is something like you know the stamp postal stamp and the envelope so earlier days 
when the email etc was not there we used to buy the postal stamp and test it how it tastes put it on the tongue and then put it on the envelope fast after it is completely dried then we come to know oh god i have fixed it on a wrong envelope now if you peel it off it will be torn so what we used to do give it a jala samadhi put it in the waters so when we put that envelope in the water then the glue which was holding these two things together that becomes loosened and we slowly peel off without destroying the stamp exactly the same way the mind and the body they are held together by the glue of this prana and when this prana is practice uh, controlled properly through pranayam then the hold between the body and the mind is loosened and then we can drop the body without dying then we start functioning through the body and no more function as the body see the purpose of yoga shastra is only one tada drashtuhu swarupe avasthanam normally yoga is defined as half way yoga ha chitta vritti nirodah but next sutra tells tada drashtuhu swarupe avasthanam is two words yada tada they always come in pairs यदा यदा ही धर्म से तदात्मा सृजाम्यहम तो तदा दृष्टु स्वरूप अवस्था मीन्स वन वेन युअर थॉट फॉर्मेशन इज सस्पेंडेड एंड यू हैव मर्ज इन द एब्सोल्यूट रियालिटी देन द योगा हैज हैपन्ड नॉट ओनली कंट्रोलिंग द माइंड नो सी फ्रेंड्स योग शास्त्र इज स्पिरिचुअल साइंस all other things are by products see like in india we keep the animals cows at home they are not only in the farm so along with the whole family members outside the main house there is a small thatch um, covering made and there the cow is there the cow is kept for what is the cow kept for the cow dung or for the milk the cow is kept for the milk cow dung comes free walk the spiritual path health will become a free cow dung let us not waste our time this beautiful opportunity the lord has given us here and now alone the truth is revealed it is not posthumous see friends bhagwan shankaracharya says samprapte sannihite kale nahi nahi rakshati dukrung karne dukrung karne means a language it doesn't matter what language you speak whether you talk in english or sanskrit or urdu it makes no difference what is important is what you talk in the same manner what is important is this life is the life wherein we can merge in the absolute for good no more again being born again being dying no more that business is there therefore when we thus get rid of this body identification through the various practices asan pranayam etc then the next question will start bothering us So if I am not the body, then who am I? See, friends. Then we are told you are a jiva, you are a soul, and we accept it blindly. See, friends. When we talk about body, we define what is a body. When we talk about God, we define about God. Satyam dhyana manantam Brahma. the supreme reality is conscious blissful existence very good now when you talk about soul you are the soul in the body please define what is the soul 
three friends they never defined soul because it doesn't exist three friends it is something like this you know in a school i don't know what they teach here or anywhere because i am not gone to school suppose there are three pots in one pot there is 5 liters of milk in other pot 10 liters the third pot 15 liters of milk this three milk samples have three percentage of fat the first pot has 2% second has 3% third has 4% fat now we mix it together all the three types of milks we mix it together and a question is asked what is the average fat percentage in this collective sample how you will start suppose the average fat percentage in the collective sample is x percent and you submit your answer book will you get marks you have to establish the value of x is it not exactly the same way if we discard to be the body then who are you then you are a jeeva you are a soul define soul please see friends without knowing what the soul is we start imagining that in every body there is one soul like for every shoe there is a soul in the same manner every body there is a soul and then we want a soul mate when the soul goes the shoe is without the soul friends soul or jeeva we have to establish first what is this soul see now to understand it i'll give one example be very attentive it's very simple man is god or divinity or parmatma or brahman or bhagavan various names man is that husband is the soul now understand this if you have to define husband who is a husband man plus the limitation of the wife and the expression of the infinite man through the limitation of the wife as a miserable expression is called as husband is it not now next step is husband a proper noun or a common noun husband is a common noun can we say that per man there is one husband think friends be very attentive i am husband because of my wife so husband is man wife and expression of man through the limitation of wife three things together is husband clear next step when my wife dies i kill my wife so many times because i don't have one so when she dies now the question is who is miserable husband cannot be miserable because when there is no wife i cannot be husband and man cannot be miserable because he was never miserable so when the wife dies what happens to husband nothing happens because he was never there be attentive these are things worth thinking contemplating upon this happened in germany in hamburg when uh, lady <clears throat> after listening for 3 days we had a retreat there spiritual retreat third day she said swami ji you should have come in my life 25 years before i said even then i would not have married you forget about it she said no no not that way i would not have divorced three times i said now over don't give a fourth chance now my question please tell me for my general knowledge when you got married for the first time you were w1 wife 1 and your husband was h1 husband 1 correct yes you got separated then again you got married 
so you became W2 H2 second pair third time again you did the same thing W3 H3 now my question is W1 is equal to W2 is equal to W3 is equal to what is it that the first husband has come out and gone into another husband is it that the first wife w1 has come out and got into the second wife no because there is nothing like husband wife these are only relational expressions of the infinite in the same manner the absolute reality expressing through the limitations of <clears throat> the pancha koshas that limited expression of the infinite is referred to as the soul or the jiva therefore there is no soul one per head in sanskrit it is called as jiva na life jiva na means no jiva it is only the life and is it not common everywhere it is the same whether it is a hunger of a, a pig or hunger of a sanyasi or a hunger of a rich man or hunger of a bird the principle of hunger is common see friends <clears throat> but we get lost in this that after death i will go to heaven or i will go to hell and then the masses are controlled only by two remote control switches number one is guilt number two is fear and then one people one starts living in a fear psychosis oh i should not have taken food on the ekadashi i have taken food now what will happen see friends abhayam sattva samshuddhi spiritual life is fearless existence heaven is not a place where you will go see kathopanishad if you study the definition of heaven is the best one given in kathopanishad see swarge loke na bhayam kinchanasti na tatra tvam na jaraya bibheti ubhe tirtva ashanaya pipase shokati go modate swarg loke heavens are that where na bhayam kinchanasti there is fearless existence number 1 fear is out of three factors how because of the body the fear is old age and death because of the prana the fear is hunger and thirst and because of the mind the fear is delusion and grief living in the heaven means free from the six sources of fear in life loka means experience loka does not mean a place lokyate iti loka see friends therefore there are two stages through which the seeker has to go the first step is freedom from body identification for this purpose we practice asan pranayam before that yama niyama in the yama a simple definition will be our conduct with the world should be such that we are not a problem for the world aim sa satya aste aparigra brahmacharya when we are no more a problem for the world we are practicing yama sadhana then we are a problem for ourselves so when we are no more a problem for ourselves we are practicing the niyam sadhana shauch santosh tapas swadhyaya ishvar pradhanaye and then after these two things are perfectly done then we come on the seat of meditation not to sit but to be happy anything you start in a happy mood you are bound to succeed anything we start under compulsion we are bound to fail therefore when we are practicing spiritual life these are the steps so as you are sitting 
today we will try to get out of body identification and try to be free from the burden of body in next 5-10 minutes as you are sitting you are perfectly all right before we begin we have to have psychological adjustments First, we are cheerful and happy. We are not here under compulsion. Nobody has compelled us. Number two, in our heart is our beloved Lord and our Guru Maharaj. The Lord protects us from within. Guru guides us from within. Therefore, the element of fear, which is experienced by many seekers, is taken care of. Third, at this moment, we are Mr. Nobody. Mr. Nobody means we do not bring even one second from the past. So at this moment, we are one moment of our age. Not 100 years, 30 years, 40 years. By this, we block our total past. Because somebody is nothing but the summation of the total past. So we are here, Mr. Nobody. Next, we don't plan what we will do after meditation. Thereby, we have closed the future. So, we are in the utter present. Present without the past and the future is presence. Now, if you observe your own body, the base of the body has become firm. Vertically, the body is steady. The weight of the body is landed on the pin bones. And now, we want to get out of body identification means the grip of the mind on the body is loosened and dropped. This is achieved by the instructions. So when we give you instructions, don't worry how to do it. It will happen. Don't come in between the instructions and your body. Relax the head muscles the forehead, relax the eyebrows, the eyelids, there is no pressure on the eyeballs, 
Don't focus them on anything. Relax the nose, lips, chin, face. Relax the ears. The neck from all the four sides. Throat below the ears and the back side. Hang down the shoulders. They are unnecessarily lifted upwards. Relax the shoulder joints, upper arms, elbows, lower arms, wrists and palms and fingers. Relax, relax, relax. Now if you observe the body is divided in two parts, relax and not yet relaxed. In the relaxed area, the weight of the hands has increased in the lap. The grip between the fingers has become strong. The muscle tone in this area is minimized. The rest of the body has tensions, etc. Now come back to the shoulders. Let us relax the main trunk, the chest, relax, abdomen, go right up to the base, relax the sides, right up to the hip joints, relax the back, from the neck downwards, go along the spine, along the muscles, right up to the pin bones, relax, relax, relax. Now the second observation, the weight of the body has increased on the pin bones. One may get pulsation because the weight has increased. So relax the hip joints, hips, thighs, knees, calf muscles, ankles, heels and toes. As if you get out of the body. So many bodies are sitting in this hall and one of them we claim to be us and ours. There is no reason, there is no logic. One more observation. The base of the body has become firm. Vertically the body is steady. And the body is totally relaxed. In fact, body is not relaxed. It is the mind which has given up the shape and the form of the body. Therefore, we are no more holding the individual mind, but the total mind which enlivens everything. And because the body is dropped, the concept that I am inside the body and the world is outside the body, is also meaningless. Now our experience is infinite, formless presence.
लाइक द स्पेस बिकॉज वी आर नो मोर होल्डिंग ऑन टू द बॉडी आइडेंटिफिकेशन all the attributes of the body they are not mine the first attribute is shape and a form now let us start playing meditation meditation what it is like being shapeless and formless so it is like being space so let us play space space what is the experience of the space it has no beginning no middle no modification no end is it not our experience we have no experience of birth we have no experience of growth we have no experience of modifications we have no experience of death and we have no experience of absence this is the real me because the bodies have shapes bodies are many space is one in the same manner the reality that i am is the one although supporting all the bodies space supports all the contents the earth water fire and air but doesn't get influenced by any one of them exactly the same way the body was small it has changed we are the same body was teenage it has changed we are the same the body was middle age it has changed we are the same the body will die and disappear we will neither die nor disappear we continue to be the same because we are playing meditation meditation therefore a meditator is not born and therefore there is neither successful meditation or unsuccessful meditation there is neither good meditation or bad meditation this experience without the experiencer is god realization
because we are not doing meditation it will not end this poise permeates in and through waking dream and deep sleep bhagwan krishna says mattaha smriti jnanam apohanancha i alone support the waking dream deep sleep and samadhi this experience is mentioned in gita nainam chindanti shastrani nainam dahati pavakaha न चैन क्लेदय न शोषे मारुता द कंटेन्ट्स डू नॉट कॉन्टेमिनेट द कंटेनर दिस इटर्नल कंटेनर विच इन्क्लूड्स जीव जगत ईश्वरा god the creator jiva the limited jagat the world all of them are contained in me this infinite being is our essential nature keep the thoughts erupt don't fight with the mind trace to whom the thoughts have come you will discover at the root of every thought there is somebody sitting so remind yourself not now now i am nobody there is no struggle there is no achievement there is no failure when melodious music is heard it is not a success for the ears when the noise is heard it is not a failure for the ears in the same manner if the thoughts come who cares udasi navadasinam remain indifferent this indifference towards the thoughts will dissolve the thoughts in the consciousness
this poise is maintained throughout the day in and through all the business of life then we start living in meditation if you observe your breathing is extremely slow and shallow because your basal metabolic rate has fallen oxygen requirement is minimum therefore without any effort if one continues to be like this leads to kevala kumbhaka it is neither the bahi kumbhak nor the antar kumbhak in keval kumbhak the mind dissolves in consciousness thereafter it is the consciousness which is expressing through the mind and no more the mind is expressing through the body take deep breath slowly two three times move your toes and fingers offer everything at the feet of the lord in your heart do not make any memory of this experience because it was not through the mind it was the trans mind experience living this experience in and through is living in meditation and not doing the meditation पूर्णमद पूर्णमद पूर्णात्पूर्णमुदच्यते पूर्ण से पूर्णमादा पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओ शाति 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 हरि ओं श्रीगुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओं